Hello, everybody. Uh, it's August 27th, it's Friday, and I'm here with Jonah um, for Fridays with Father. A chance to reach out uh, to you and uh, share with you uh, a few things uh, that are on my mind. Um, Jonah's here with me today. Um, he's been, um, you know, had some health concerns recently. He's developed a kind of like a dry, honking cough. So that's been a bit of a worry for me. Um, and he's got like a wart on his leg and he keeps licking it and he won't let, <laughs> he won't stop licking it. So um, he's been a bit of a concern, haven't you? But generally you're okay in, your, in yourself. So um, we took him to the vet on uh, sometime this week and he had blood tests and he had x-rays and all sorts. And uh, so far, you know, nothing is, uh, you know, super serious or, or we haven't come to the cause of his cough uh, maybe it's an allergy i don't know but um four years ago jonah was diagnosed with a heart murmur so um he had a, an echocardiogram then so uh, they want him to have another one now next next wednesday just to see that you know he's you know he's okay and his heart is not enlarged so and if it is then he's going to have to go on medication so I'm saying my prayers that it's, you know, that it's not his heart and that it's something else which is causing this kind of rather kind of like honkish kind of dry, raspy cough. It's not all the time. It's just intermittent, you know, different things sometimes when he's excited or goes up and downstairs. So uh, Jonah, like us all, has his ailments. And so we've been dealing with them this past week um, in the same way. Um, you know, this last week I've been dealing with a few ailments myself. I, I suddenly took uh, rather unwell on Saturday afternoon. That's right. I'd, I'd had this meeting with the catechists in the morning and then I'd had a, a wedding in the afternoon and I did confessions and then suddenly I felt very unwell, like a stomach flu kind of thing, you know. So I made it, as you'll have seen, you know, to the picnic in the parking lot for about, you know, half an hour. Um, and I tried again, uh, but I just, I wasn't well enough, really. I just had to uh, retire and uh, I had an eventful night, as you can imagine. Um, but I was able to hear the music from the parking lot. And I saw the rest of it was on Facebook, too, but I wasn't very well. And then, then Sunday was just a matter of getting through the masses just to see if I can get through the mass heaven knows if it made any sense you know in my preaching but i i did my best and then and then after that i just had to rest for the um completely for for sunday and and part of monday but over the past week i've been uh, feeling more like myself and today i feel great um i've been swimming and um and i went swimming yesterday as well so all things are looking good but um uh, we're all uh, dealing with ailments even down to jonah so anyway, today um, it's August the 27th and uh, it's a lovely feast today in, in the Catholic Church. It's the Feast of St. Monica, a wonderful holy lady from Northern Africa, okay? And she happens to be the mother of St. Augustine, um, probably one of the biggest saints in the Catholic Church, you know, is St. Augustine. And St. Monica um, was blessed to be his mother. Well, kind of blessed. Um, what happened was really, I mean, she was uh, born of a, quite a well-to-do family, you know, educated family, and, and she was, in, you know, forced to, to marry somebody that she didn't really want to marry. And um, her husband was violent and, and bad-tempered and hard to live with. And, and her mother-in-law was also a misery to be around. And then on top of that, you know, um, one of the sons that she had, you know, through, <laughs> through marriage, turned out to be Augustine. And he was not a holy, holy, holy person, you know, at the beginning of his life. In fact, he was quite the opposite. He was what you might call a tearaway. So, you know, um, and, but Monica was very devoted to him. In the same way, she was very devoted to being a wife and putting up with and being patient with her husband and also her horrible mother-in-law. Um, she was very patient and very kind. And, and so what she did was she, she prayed greatly for those three individuals, you know, for a husband, a mother-in-law, 
and her son Augustine, you know, um, that they would be converted and that they would find faith and they would be baptized in the same way that she was, you know, a baptized uh, member of the church. And um, over a period of time, it happened. A husband converted and then he died. And then the mother-in-law, she converted, baptized and died. And then finally, um, her son, Augustine, you know, and, and Augustine was a real tear away. He did everything wrong and he, he tried to escape his mother's care and everything. He ran away from her and all sorts. Ultimately, he was baptized by St. Ambrose in Milan. And, uh, you know, Augustine was a very bright person. Lots of, he studied a lot. And, and it was through, you know, in some ways the prayers of Monica that this person who seems so far from God came so close to God and then sort of converted himself into being um, one of the greatest saints our church has known. Uh, most of our doctrine, most of our teaching um, is really being formulated through the study and the work of uh, the theology of St. Augustine. So, um, so Monica, Monica is that person who was very much behind him, praying, enduring, and and through all of that, you know, really through her holiness, um, brought those people to God. I think it's a great thing. It's a great thing. And now um, she, she said something which I like. She said a number of things I like, really. But one thing she said was um, nothing, nothing is far from God. Nothing is far from God. And we tend to think sometimes that, you know, that, you know, or oh, that place is godless, or that person is far from God, you know, but, um, but is anything really that far from God? That's what she makes me question today, you know, uh, and, and I suppose when you think about it, if God is great, if God is good, and God can do impossible things, um, then he must be very close uh, to all of us, you know, really. And, and, and he wants to be even closer. Um, so he's never that far from us in, in times of trouble, distress, and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, he's, and he's never far from anything. Uh, God is present in most of these things. We just have to find a way of praying for people to turn towards God, you know, to turn towards him. And, uh, and that's when when things, marvelous things seem to happen, like the conversion of her son. He was never really far from God. He just wasn't looking in the right direction. But through her prayers, um, St. Monica's intercession, through her prayers, um, Augustine was able to turn just that, that little bit towards Jesus and, and find something very big and something very special, which changed his life, which changed um, the church and which changed the world. So that's St. Augustine, uh, Saint, that's St. Monica, sorry, um, mother of St. Augustine, whom we honor today in a special way. But, you know, in light of what um, she said about nothing is far from God, you know, I'm thinking today, um, pondering, you know, the horrendous stuff that's going on in, in Afghanistan and, and the terror attacks yesterday uh, and those people from, uh, you know, our country here that lost their lives, you know, and and countless others and and it is very tempting to sort of wash your hands and say you know you know we can't do anything with afghanistan it's like it's like saying um it's far from redemption it's far from you know from being put right it's far from god as if as if it's beyond the reach of god and but our faith we must remember tells us that there's nothing far from god and St. Monica reminds us of that today. And whilst we might not be able, you know, to change things such as they are, you know, on the ground there in, in Afghanistan right now, we have to believe in the power of prayer. And I do increasingly. Um, we have to believe that nothing is far from God. Uh, and the people that we think who are the furthest from God, they're not really. But they just need to turn or it needs to turn itself in the direction of God for marvelous things to happen. So 
you know, I invite you really, um, you know, in the, the, the horror of it all and the frustration of it all and whatever you think about it, uh, the situation and the politics behind it, but, but I invite you to pray, you know, to pray uh, with me, to pray with St. Monica. So uh, for a situation which seems to be far from God, uh, that it not be, you know, um, uh, and that God's grace, you know, intervene there uh, to bring to bring healing and to bring um, some kind of uh, solution to a situation which is very, very difficult. So um, I was thinking of and praying about that today, and I think St. Monica is probably a good intercessor uh, for every one of us, um, especially when we think that things are beyond the reach of God because there nothing is. Nothing is beyond the reach of God uh, in the same way that Afghanistan is not uh, beyond the reach of God. And so we need to pray and pray hard and pray unceasingly. So let's do that today. Okay, so that's St. Monica in a nutshell. Um, last Saturday, as I mentioned to you, I, um, I had a meeting with uh, catechists of our parish. Um, the ones who work in the religious education program, the ones that prepare our children for First Communion and First Reconciliation and, uh, and for Confirmation. And, and it was a nice meeting. We, we met at 9 o'clock on Saturday morning and we remained with each other uh, until 10.30 when we finished with a small prayer before the Blessed Sacrament. And I think it was, it was, a, it was a nice experience. It was for me. I hope it was for them, you know. Um, but... Um, what I would say that's interesting is that, you know, that um, I probably know about half of them and there were a group of maybe 30. Um, so I know about half of them uh, and I know them by name. Um, but the other half, um, it was the first time really I'd met with them and maybe I'd heard some of the names, but I'd never ever met them. Um, what that told me was that you see that it was their first time back at Church of the Holy Spirit since the since the pandemic started, you know, so I just reminded that me of the the after effects of of the uh, of the pandemic or, or the ongoing effects of the pandemic and how it has like in some ways pushed people away uh, from the community of the church and um, and only now in some ways they're starting to to return and they returned to this meeting with the intention of. Uh, of serving as catechists here as we start up our program again now in uh, in early September. Um, so um, it, it was nice and it was good and and I was happy to meet them all and and I and I really look forward to meeting them again um, and more frequently and to building up a good working relationship uh, with each catechist so that there's a strong team of, uh, of teachers, of people who, who pass on the faith to our young children. It's, um, it's a very beautiful but challenging ministry, um, and especially during these very difficult times. So we will begin with, um, you know, sort of in-person classes um, on a limited scale uh, here in September. Um, last year we did a sort of online thing, which was Aura, or a home assignment kind of uh, program, which was, you know, had limited success, but, you know, we did our best. But this time now we want to have people uh, in the classrooms with their teachers. So we're starting to do that. So, you know, I ask you to, to pray for them, really, because um, uh, they need our support. Um, I will say that, you know, that I think in the past the, the, the program of religious education here at Church of the Holy Spirit has been very strong. And some years, you know, the, the program has had, you know, maybe around 500 children uh, registered in the program, and um, which is a, an amazing number. Um, but I would say that probably at the moment, given the with our new kind of uh, inscriptions or registrations for, for classes, we're probably about the half of that, really, about 250 in total, um, maybe maybe a bit more but we're certainly not 500. So um, there's a lot of work to be done. And um, if you want to be part of that, if you might be interested in, in being a catechist and working with me and this team of 30 people 
to little by little, you know, build and strengthen our religious education program here, uh, then please reach out to me, okay? And, um, you know, we have program in both English and in Spanish, and so we need both uh, catechists and assistants and helpers and all kinds of stuff to sort of make this program work, okay? So that was one of the activities that, um, that I did this past week, okay? So that was that. Um, and the other thing I was going to say to you was that um, um, I went to the library yesterday here in Schomburg and uh, I didn't go to, to get a book or anything like that. I went because uh, I was told that there was a, a small exhibition of the artwork of, um, of Mary uh, Blinn, um, who is the deceased wife of one of our parishioners and a former parishioner herself. And we often pray for her repose here in, in the Mass at uh, Church of the Holy Spirit. So I went to the, the library to see um, some of her work and it was very, very lovely, you know, lovely diverse selection of like uh, prints and, and sketches and uh, paintings and, um, you know, sort of pastel works. And um, so I was looking at that and there was, there was one particular uh, little uh, painting or drawing, I'm not sure quite what it was, it was coloured. Um, which drew my attention, and it was um, it was three kind of mature trees uh, in a row, you know, um, with some leaves on the branches and some leaves had fallen on the ground, and you could see the roots um, spreading out in in some ways an expression of their maturity, and you know um, they were they were in a in a line and through the the, the branches. Um, had stretched out so far that they were like touching the other tree, you know, really. And uh, the roots had like spread out so much that they were touching the roots of the other tree. So there were three obviously different trees, but in some ways they were all connected and they kind of looked like one tree. And and through the the, the gaps between the tree, there was a wonderful kind of like, kind of like a sunset or a, a sort of dawn or... Um, or sunrise kind of color experience in the sky and it was very beautiful very colorful very warm um, but what it said to me was you know that just in some ways how how connected um, we are um, with each other you know really um, through creation uh, and how creation itself is so connected and the way the trees were sort of you know they were they were separate but they were together and almost like one. And they certainly looked like one in that picture. And, um, and, and the importance of us to realize that, that, you know, that, um, that, that, that creation and nature and all the stuff outside is not separate from us, not different from us. We're, we're all kind of connected to that because, you know, we, we were all created by the same God, um, whether it was trees or human beings or little animals like Jonah, you know. That connectedness is important for us to remember, uh, to honor, respect, and then in our prayer to be able to, to praise God and to thank God for that connection that we have, you know, um, in nature, in nature. So I was really uh, taken with the picture uh, by Mary Blinn, and uh, I wasn't sure if I was allowed to do it, but I took a photo anyway. But it, it wasn't a very good photo, and I, I might try and put it on the website. I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to do that. I'll find out. But, um, but anyway, if I could share it with you, I would. But I, I just tried to describe to you what it looked like. But the colors were beautiful. And it, it was fairly clear to me what the message was in that piece of art. Um, so I, I'm saying all of this to you because, 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 um, because of the wonderful things he does. Um, because um, as we move into the fall now, the church brings to our attention uh, something which is, you know, not completely official but something which is proposed that we think about a season of creation whereby in the same way we have a season of advent and things like that to have a season of creation uh, where we we take time to appreciate you know God's goodness in the created things uh, around us you know in nature it, most especially and to and to respect and value and to not abuse you know what God has made so um, last year we tried to bring that uh, 
uh, to your, uh, your minds or attention through some of the prayers. Uh, I don't think we we're very good at it. I talked about it a bit. I tried to preach about it a bit, but I'm not sure if we made any impact. So then as I was thinking, well, you know, this year we should try, try and do something to make some kind of impression or at least mark, you know, the season of creation and the fact that we, we are, you know, part of all of this, a part of the, the outside as well as the inside. So what I thought about is this. On October 2nd and 3rd, at the 5 p.m. Mass on the 2nd and the 12 noon Mass on the 3rd, uh, Mass that day will be celebrated outside in the courtyard. Yeah, yeah, outside on the grass. And um, I know it, it sounds maybe slightly mad, but um, weather permitting, of course, and, and I'm hoping that it will be nice weather. So anybody who comes to, is planning to come to Mass on October the 2nd at 5 p.m., okay, um, it won't be inside, unless, of course, it's raining. Um, it will be outside on the lawn, um, and you can come and sit wherever you like. However, you have to bring a lawn chair or a blanket, okay? We will not be providing seating, all right? So if you're coming to that Mass, know that you need to bring a chair and know that it will be outside on the lawn. That's a 5 p.m. Mass on October the 2nd. And then, then after the Mass, you know, uh, for those who wish, um, there's an invitation to, if you want to picnic on the lawn or, or have, you know, aperitifs on the lawn afterwards, you know, you're more than welcome to do so. And, and I might join you there too. But it, I thought to myself, well, if we're trying to sort of bring to people's awareness the importance of creation, and everything that's made by God around us, then we should just go outside and immerse ourselves in it in it in the fall creation of this year. So that's what we're planning to do on the 2nd of October at the 5 o'clock Mass and the 3rd of October at the 12 noon Mass in Spanish. Again, you need to bring a chair or a blanket or both. Okay, so there you are. That's my plan. Uh, I hope you like it. I'm sure if you don't, you let me know. For now, um, I will love you and leave you. I've got a, a priest's meeting with the cardinal at noon, so I need to go and uh, get myself in order. All right. So I'll be seeing you um, hopefully at Mass uh, this coming Sunday, one way or the other. All right. Take care of yourselves. Uh, be joyful. Keep the faith. And uh, take care. Bye-bye.